The debate over leaving the European Convention on Human Rights and Robert Jenrick's campaign and future for the Conservative Party, I, 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 well, it, it will be solved in just a few days' time, really. Um, and, you know, it's he's advocating for the UK to leave the European Convention on Human Rights, the ECHR. And why Jenrick and his supporters believe this is a good idea, why critics argue that they're wrong... What this debate means for the Conservative Party and British politics over the next decade, thats those are the questions, because the fact that Jenrick is putting forward this idea doesn't mean it's just his idea. He's a prominent Conservative MP who has served in various ministerial roles, including as Minister of State for Immigration, and his recent campaign focuses on the UK's relationship with the ECHR, an international treaty established in 1950 to protect human rights and political freedoms in Europe. And the ECHR is enforced by the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg. And Jenrick and his supporters argue that the ECHR hinders the UK's ability to manage immigration effectively, particularly concerning illegal immigration, or what Suella Bravman has defined as illegal immigration, and the deport the deportation of foreign nationals who commit crimes in the UK. They believe that uh, the ECHR undermines British sovereignty and legal autonomy. It allows an international court to overrule UK courts and parliament, which they see as sort of stamping on our sovereignty. Jenrick has referred to the ECHR as a criminal's charter, suggesting it prioritises the rights of criminals and illegal immigrants over law-abiding citizens. They claim that the ECHR makes it difficult to deport individuals who pose a threat to public safety or who have entered the country illegally. By leaving the ECHR, the UK could implement stricter immigration controls and expedite deportations. Supporters point to countries like Poland and Greece, which have taken a hardline stance on immigration, sometimes allegedly acting contrary to ECHR obligations without facing significant repercussions. The point is that Greece has been doing this for a very long time, and Greece has, Greece has pioneered this idea of pushbacks, literally pushing migrant boats back into the sea or riddling those boats with gunshots. This has been going on, certainly in my knowledge, since 2001. And in a recent statement, Jenrick said... The ECHR has been weaponized by those who wish to prevent us from controlling our borders and ensuring the safety of our citizens. It's time to consider whether our continued membership is in the national interest. This is why critics think that it's that Jenrick and Co are wrong. They think, first of all, that the ECHR provides essential protections for individual rights and freedoms. Leaving could weaken those protections for everyone in the UK, not just immigrants or foreign nationals. It's a court... It's an ultimate court when everything else has failed. Secondly, uh, exiting the ECHR might damage the UK's international standing. As one of the architects of the convention, leaving it could signal a retreat from the country's commitment to human rights, affecting diplomatic relations and soft power, and also heavily compromising the agreements in Ireland between Northern Ireland and the... Um, and, and the south of Ireland. And the legal and constitutional challenges that would follow our leaving the ECHR, it's embedded into UK law through the Human Rights Act in 1998, and repealing or replacing this act would create legal uncertainty and potential constitutional crises, especially concerning devolved governments in Scotland and Northern Ireland. Critics also argue that leaving the ECHR may not achieve the desired results and other countries within the, H, uh, the ECHR manage to deport illegal immigrants more effectively, suggesting that the issue lies in domestic policy and administrative efficiency rather than international obligations. The former Supreme Court of Justice, Lord Sumption, has noted many of the rights protected by the ECHR are already part of our common law tradition. Leaving the Convention would not necessarily enhance our ability to control our borders, but could erode fundamental rights. And Keir Starmer has said that abandoning the ECHR is not a silver bullet for immigration issues. It would, not, it would be a step backwards for human rights and would harm our reputation globally. 
Within the Conservative Party, uh, which has long been divided over the UK's relationship with European institutions, a schism most evident during the Brexit debates, the current discussion over the ECHR is a continuation of this struggle between the party's moderate and hardline factions. In other words, the European debate is still going on. It's just going on about something slightly different. It's going on about immigration. Because Brexit was not effective, the Brexit frustration has been funnelled into a debate about immigration. Some Conservatives fear that leaving the ECHR could alienate moderate voters and further divide the party. Others believe that taking a strong stance on immigration and sovereignty is necessary to retain support from their base and counter the rise of far-right parties like Reform UK. Over the next decade, the Conservative Party faces a number of challenges. It faces problems with internal division. It faces problems about being electorally viable and it needs to appeal to a broader spectrum of voters than it is currently aiming at. The generic Braverman focus is very much towards the right of the party. And parties like Reform UK could siphon off, of course, right-wing support, while Labour aims to capture the centre ground. It won't. The centre ground, believe me, is simply going to remain non-voting, or it will go over to the Lib Dems. The question therefore arises, is Jenrick's campaign a sign of a fading right-wing movement or is it resonating with public sentiment? Some argue that the hardline stance is out of touch with a populace that values human rights and international cooperation. Demographic challenges, uh, changes and shifting social attitudes may render such positions less popular over time. Others contend that the Concerns over immigration and sovereignty remain potent issues and economic uncertainties and global events can heighten nationalist sentiments, suggesting that Jenrick's campaign could indeed be tapping into the current mood. So whether Jenrick is right or not is a matter of perspective. From, a, from the point of view of the idea of Britain as a sovereign power, the, those prioritising national sovereignty and strict immigration controls might agree with Jenrick, seeing the ECHR as an obstacle. From a human rights perspective, advocates for human rights and international law would argue that the benefits of the ECHR outweigh the drawbacks and the solutions should be sought within its framework. Robert Jenrick's campaign to leave the ECHR highlights a critical debate within British politics about sovereignty, human rights immigration control, and while Jenrick and his supporters see leaving the ECHR as a necessary step to regain control over national affairs, critics warn of the legal, moral and diplomatic repercussions. The Conservative Party needs to navigate this complex issue carefully. So far, it's been led by the nose towards the right. It needs to find some way to come back to the centre. And the decisions which are being made at the moment will either shatter the Conservative Party and destroy it completely, which is my suspicion, or the Jenrick and Braverman camps will both be rejected and possibly Braverman, should she succeed, will find that she will have to kowtow far more to the middle ground than to the right wing.